In this video, we will investigate the current voltage characteristics of a resonant tunneling diode using a numerical finite difference technique. Before we get started, though, we should probably go over the basics of what's happening in this device. The resonant tunneling diode, or RTD, is based on the quantum mechanical phenomenon described by the wave function in Schrodinger's equation. Succinctly, the wave function describes the energy of the system where the left-hand side is the total energy of the wave function, and the right-hand side is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the wave function. On its own, the wave function does not mean much, but different operators can be applied to it to find out useful information about the matter described by the wave. For example, if you integrate the conjugate of the wave function times itself over an interval of space, you will calculate the probability of finding the particle in that region. Unlike classical mechanics where particles have an exact location, particles described by the wave function only have probabilities of being in different locations. An interesting result that is achieved when the wave function is calculated is the idea of electron tunneling. In classical physics, if a particle encounters a potential energy barrier larger than its own kinetic energy, there is no way for it to get across said barrier without an additional supply of kinetic energy. Solutions to the wave equation show a slightly different story. If the barrier is thin enough, there is a probability that an electron can tunnel through the barrier and end up on the other side of it without needing any additional energy. This is the primary phenomenon exploited by resulting resonant tunneling diodes. A diode is any device that allows electrical current through it if voltage is applied in one direction, but doesn't allow current when applied in the opposite direction. Normally this is achieved through a contact of differently doped semiconductors, but similar characteristics can be found by creating a potential energy profile by growing material with varying band gaps. The structure shown here, and simulated later, is a double barrier structure. When solving Schrodinger's equation between two closely spaced potential barriers, energy levels become quantized. What this means is that only electrons of specific energies are allowed to transmit in these quantum wells. The gray regions in the diagram shown are the areas on the opposite sides of the resonant tunneling diode where electrons are, and the orange line in the quantum well shows a quantized energy level. Initially, when a small bias is applied to the junction, which is seen by a downward slope in the potential energy profile, the gray area does not align with the quantized level. As more bias is applied to the junction, the energy levels align and allow current to flow through the device. Most diodes have an exponentially increase in current with increased voltage, but RTDs are unique in that they have a region of negative differential resistance. That is, they have a region on their IV curve where the, s the slope becomes negative and the current decreases with increasing voltage as the quantized energy levels become misaligned. To simulate this device, Schrodinger's time-dependent equation, as was shown earlier, is broken up into its real and imaginary components, and approximated with a finite difference technique. The real and imaginary components are staggered in space, so that the real component is calculated at whole steps, and the imaginary component is calculated at half steps. A wave packet of a specified energy is then sent through the barriers, and transmission and reflection coefficients are calculated. In our simulation, we used material properties based on silicon substrates with a barrier created by regions of compound silicon germanium. The barrier heights are 150 milli electron volts. The barrier widths are 75 angstroms, and the width of the quantum well is 50 angstroms. These values are taken from fabricated devices that have realized IV characteristics for comparison. The wave packet is created as a 30 milli electron volt electron in a Gaussian envelope. Finally, the reflectance is calculated by dynamically evaluating the integral of the probability density function as described earlier over the space up until the first barrier. The reflectance and in-well percentages are calculated similarly. As can be seen here, at zero bias, the reflectance is much greater than the transmittance, and very little of the wave packet goes through. 
The amount of the wave packet that remains in the well is minimal, but suggests that the structure has a role in impeding transmission of the electron. The result would be a relatively low current across a diode when there is no applied voltage. Of course, the key characteristic of resonant tunneling diodes is that, under the appropriate bias voltage, the transmission of current is achievable. In this simulation, we take the same wave packet from before, except this time the potential field has a bias of 5 volts across the window. In effect, as can be seen by the blue outline, the barrier to passage is lowered. This is in turn reflected by the calculated transmission and reflection coefficients, which are almost the exact opposite of the previous simulation.